I welcome you all to this second mega edition of Good Air Summit and Movement. Data from State of Global Air 2020 report is for the year 2019 and underlines that the number of deaths caused by air pollution in India the previous year is around half a million more than what the most dreaded health crisis of the present day, COVID-19, has inflicted so far globally. A calamity like the pandemic shall not go waste. And it must leave the undeliable learning that we must do whatever it takes to protect and promote health. And this is precisely what every nation, every individual is doing when it comes tackling COVID-19. But we don't see the same seriousness when it comes to our response to air pollution. And now this is the time we must show our collective resilience and resolve to step up our fight against the killer air pollution and against our own habits that directly or indirectly contribute in corrupting this very source of our life on this planet. Good Air Movement, of which this summit is a part, is one such endeavor that tries to awaken our common conscience to not only stop all that pollute our air, but also proactively contribute towards making every person breathe into good air. And today is one of those momentous occasions when we are going to see that the voices of our children, our young ambassadors for health and well-being and good air, the future of our nation, demanding and pledging for good air will get echoed and amplified by industry leaders, policy makers, influencers, and most remarkably, the religious and spiritual leaders whose call can help bringing that much needed behavioral change for ensuring good air by everyone and for everyone. So let me welcome today's very, very special and distinguished speakers and panelists who have joined us on this second edition of Good Air Summit and to encourage and inspire all those who are watching it and all those to whom this message will reach to work for air, to work for cleaning the air. So I would like to begin with by welcoming Sri Swami Chidanand Saraswati Ji. He is the president and spiritual head of Paramarth Niketan Rishikes and one of the largest interfaith spiritual institution in India. He is dedicated to the aim of serving humanity and is also the co-founder of Global Interfaith Voice Alliance, the world's first ever international interfaith initiative ensuring access to safe water, sanitation, and hygiene. And we deeply thank our, we are deeply thankful that he has extended support of this institution to the cause of good air as well. We also welcome Honorable Retired Justice Sutant Kumar, the former chairperson of National Green Tribunal and former judge at the Supreme Court of India. He played an instrumental role in widening the horizon of environmental jurisprudence in India, delivering judgments related to cleaning of rivers, including Ganga and Yamuna, lakes, air pollution, and Himalayan glaciers, and also managing the municipal solid waste and protection of forests. In keeping with the principle of effective and expeditious disposal of cases, Justice Sutantra Kumar famously disposed of 209 cases of National Green Tribunal in a day. He is also the head of our advisory board for the Good Air Movement. Thank you so much, Justice Kumar, for all your support and your presence here today. We also are honored to have Dr. Randeep Guleria, Director of country's largest public hospital and institution, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. And he's also India's most prominent face in this fight against COVID-19 and barely needs an introduction. 
His focus and passion towards promoting good lung health is exemplary, and he's, this made him become the first Indian to get a doctorate of medicine in pulmonary and critical care medicines. We are honored to have Dr. Guleria also as a member of Good Air Advisory Board, or Good Air Movement uh, Advisory Board. Also, let me welcome Dr. Ajay Mathur, the Director General of Energy and Resources Institute, Terry. He was the Director General of Bureau of Energy Efficiency and played a critical role in mainstreaming energy efficiency. Again, a very, very important factor to reduce pollution by utilizing or using energy more judiciously and efficiently making it a part of vulnerabilities of both households and energy intensive industries. As a key climate change negotiator, Dr. Mathur led through the Paris Agreement in 2015. We are also joined by Dia Mirza. She is an award-winning actor and a producer. However, she plays a profound role in real life too as the UN Environment Goodwill Ambassador and United Nations Secretary General Advocate for Sustainable Development Goals. She is a committed voice for social change, conservation, and environment, and making them a part of her life. Thank you so much, Ms. Mirza, for joining us. Last but not the least, we are privileged to have Dr. Valentin Foltis, Senior Program and Science Officer at the Climate and Clean Air Coalition of United Nations Environment Program, one of the foremost names who is vocal against open burning in Delhi and CR. Dr. Foltescu has frequently shed light on complex interplay of seasonality, source profile, and how those sources contribute to the pollution concentration in our uh, city. So with this, uh, we will also be uh, getting a very special message and address from Honorable Union Minister for Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Sikas Javadekar, during the session. But before that, let me continue uh, the tradition of lighting the lamp of knowledge and wisdom to make beginning of any initiative or species. I request all our esteemed guests on theirs to join us for a virtual lamp lighting as we believe it will enlighten our path for this crucial endeavor. And this lamp lighting will also be accompanied by the prayer recital by a group of very special children, you know, uh, namely Divya, R.P., Isai, Arasan, Balarukpa, and Ashok from Samarthanam Foundation. So let's proceed with the lamp light. <laughs> Samarthanam Foundation for arranging this wonderful prayer recital from you know such a group of special children and uh, now with, we have the blessings of Almighty in, in this such a, a critical endeavor. Uh, let's go ahead with today's proceedings and hear from our panelists what they have to share and what we need to do uh, when it comes to tackling or fighting the air pollution. So now I would like to request, and I would like to begin this session by uh, hearing that what all 
causing you know uh, that damage to our health so let me request dr vandeep guleria to enlighten us on how this chronic and ever worsening problem of air pollution is taking toll on our health and what we ought to do to stop it dr vandeep guleria thank you very much for inviting me and uh, all the dignitaries who have joined in through this uh, uh, zoom meeting or through the webinar uh good morning to all of you uh, i'd like to take this opportunity also to congratulate ihw for uh, this uh, second edition of the global good air summit and we just need to look outside to see why we need to have such a summit the air quality is really something uh, that uh, is uh, troublesome for all of us who are staying in delhi i had a individual who comes from outer delhi and he told me the air quality in, in his area was it was being shown as 999 and that's not because it was 999 it's because the meter could did not have the capacity to go beyond three digits and it's possibly likely to be in more than a thousand or maybe 1500 but it was never anticipated that we would have such bad air that you need a uh, meters which would actually calculate uh, or so the air quality index even more than 999 so therefore i think it's very important for us to really understand why this issue is so burning and so really important so the first question really people ask is how big is this problem and i think as was already uh, mentioned uh, by shri kamal narayan that there it is there is data now to show that this is a huge problem if you look at the uh, paper published in lancet which looked at the global burden of disease uh, and looked at 87 risk factors for 2019 in 204 countries air pollution was the fourth leading cause of mortality and the third cause for disability adjusted life years and this paper actually highlighted that globally this is the there is the largest increase over the last few years in ambient air pollution as has already been said that if you look at the recent uh, paper which came out uh, last year by the health effect institute the state of global air uh, it suggested that almost 6.67 million people die every year because of air pollution and uh, the a paper published in lancet looked at in india the mortality and it showed that when we start comparing we looked at mortality because of low respiratory tract infection chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and heart disease air pollution contributes much more to this than even tobacco uh, use we make such a big issue about cigarette smoking and the use of tobacco but we really don't talk about air pollution the way we should as far as uh, exposure is concerned and we all know that pollutants cause inflammation in our airways they cause inflammation in our blood vessels and the problem that i have is we always discuss the acute effects pollution levels are very high and our data study that we did over two years in at aims and other hospitals showed that whenever uh, air quality was worse there was a spike in the number of patients coming to the emergency with respiratory problems in the next 5 to 6 days so this is the acute effect but there is also a chronic effect and that is something that we really need to understand whether it be copd heart disease low respiratory tract infection diabetes lung cancer stroke or neonatal death there is enough data which suggests that almost 20 to 40% of deaths in all of this is related to air pollution yet we really do nothing about it and that's because it's what i call a silent killer you have a person who dies of covid 19 you will know immediately that he was covid positive rt pcr was done it was positive this is a covid related death but if a person dies because of worsening of air pollution and his underlying condition worsens because of air pollution you have really no way to definitely be able to prove that and because of that it's creating a huge issue of people uh, and policy makers sometimes not understanding the gravity of the situation i think we really need to start working aggressively and it has to be a sustainable solution this is something that we see every year i mean uh, we could this is the summit could be had last year and it would be the similar thing the air outside would be the same and we would be discussing the same thing so what is a sustainable solution that is uh, there for us which is practical i think we need to really start deliberating on this what can we do which will really make a difference in the long run 
every year we talk about uh, uh, stubble burning in haryana and punjab nothing gets done we talk about uh, having environmentally friendly transport nothing is really done it's still dangerous to cycle in delhi you may get hit and it may cause more of problem we don't have a dedicated cycling track we talk of better public transport but um, i've traveled uh, in the metro at times and sometimes you uh, you get pushed in and pushed out uh, of the metro without realizing how you got in and how you got out that's how the crowd is so there are issues that we have and we need to find a solution and just a few days ago when i was trying to put this forward uh, one of the uh, persons in that meeting actually objected and said you need to uh, look at the loss of of uh, earnings and uh, and the effect of economy on those who are making crackers and i tried to tell him i tried to tell him that the cost of health is much more if you calculated than of the industry which is making fire crackers and you need to really look at it in a holistic manner rather than saying that there will be a loss of economy for those people who are making crackers so there is a lot of uh, resistance from different quarters and i think all of us as a group need to start working together brainstorming and coming out with a sustainable solution and as has been rightly said the future of the next generation is at stake uh, because the type of air pollution that we are breathing is leading to retardation in the growth of the lung it's leading to higher chance of recurrent respiratory tract infection and now with covid 19 there is enough data now which shows that you can get more severe covid infection if you are living in an area where air pollution levels are high therefore i think there is an urgent need for all of us to really find sustainable solutions and develop strategies which should be effective in the long run thank you very much thank you so much dr guleria and uh, you know very important that this silent killer is somehow despite as you said that around 20 to 40% of deaths being caused by our very well known uh, multiple chronic diseases uh, is now being ignored uh, uh, or or not being given as much attention uh, i'm sure that you know uh, uh, efforts from all of us may lead to have a better response from everyone uh, both from systems as well as the people of this country uh, let me now since we understand that you know what is the cost of the health uh, we are incurring and and which is massive much more than what we see from this pandemic and not to say that we need not to respond to this pandemic but at the same time we also need to respond to the pandemic which we are facing every year so let me now invite our uh, sri swami chidanand saraswati uh, uh, swami ji you are leading a global uh, movement for multiple things uh, for was for hygiene for sanitation for clean water air is also one i think much more and most important thing for life how do would you think that uh, we can have a much more stronger coherent response from all across for that dheere dheere chal raha hai tum to bahut tez ja rahe ho असतो मदगमय तमसो मोतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मा अमृत गमय ओ शांति 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 being here at parmarth niketan rishikesh joining you from the holy banks of madhur ganga it is so wonderful to see you all our esteemed panelist and speakers come together for the good air e summit sabhi mahanubhavon aur shrotaon ko mera bhav bhara abhinandan here in parmarth niketan 
when devotees and pilgrims visit us in the lap of the himalayas in uttarakhand they often talk about how lucky we are to have clean air clean water and clean soil however i believe that clean air water and soil is not a privilege it is a fundamental right and an essential necessity and today we are racing towards more developed cities but at the expense of our environment and our planet it's so sad we need to put the eco back in our economy eco nami we need to understand that the development that undermines our environment our ecology is not sustainable dr guleria was just talking about this that we have to have a sustainable solutions it is not sustainable for our planet and it is not sustainable for us the way we are moving forward during covid 19 we have also had time to reflect that the pollution is caused by us and because when we are locked down mother earth can finally breathe but this is not the solution the mother ga mother earth has to create a lockdown we are the problem and we must now be the solution therefore let us move from a greed culture to a green culture a greed culture to a need culture we have to ask ourselves do we need really what we when we go to shop shopping centers we don't we should not follow the greed culture we should follow the need culture and a need culture to a new culture we have to create a new culture a new culture and a new normal that inspires our youth and our women to come forward and lead the way and is possible i can see the power in our youth in our women they all have to come forward a new culture that is established on the mantra of nature culture and future because when our nature and culture are preserved and protected then and only then can our future be protected it is time that as governments co csos institutions corporates and individuals we must all come together to fight our air pollution there is so much in the world that we cannot fix and change but it is time for us to work all together that we can actually charge and change and we can fix mujhe lagta hai ki mana ki is zameen ko gulzar na kar sake hum kuch kaate to kam hue guzre jidhar se hum we can we can't make the world a rose garden but we can remove the thorns along the path that we tread such that it is better for our sisters and brothers that follow the path later our simple actions like planting trees on our birthdays anniversaries and special occasions choosing to be vegetarian reducing our energy and water consumption can all be green and conscious actions we can take every day to fight and reduce pollution and it can happen and it must happen we must all remember that we are not owners of our planet covid 19 has taught us that bahar sab kuch khula tha lekin hum bhitar band ho gaye kya mila and this corona the covid 19 is a, to me is a great ambassador of mother nature that teaches us that we are mere custodian and guardians of this planet interfaith leaders and faith based organizations have a great role to play 
we are working with them day and night and we all together must lead by example and so the seeds are values that put prayer into action let our meditation our yoga our worship and our prayers be one that actively makes the planet a better place for all living beings not only for human beings for all living beings bharat mein वायु प्रदूषण से लड़ने के लिए ये जो जागृति अभियान आपने चलाया है ना मुझे लगता है कि ये बहुत जरूरी है बहुत आवश्यकता है इसकी मैं इस कार्यक्रम की दिल से प्रशंसा करता हूं जैसा कि मैं अभी बता रहा था कि कोरोना ने हमें दिखा दिया बता दिया कि अब जागने की बारी है हम कितने दिनों तक घरों में बंद रह सकते हैं और मास्क पहने रह सकते हैं ये एक संभलने का अवसर है कोरोना हैज गिवन अस अपॉर्चुनिटी नेचर हैज गिवन अस अपॉर्चुनिटी अब नहीं संभले तो फिर बहुत देर हो जाएगी अभी नहीं तो कभी नहीं जीवन जितना नेचुरल होगा नैसर्गिक होगा उतना ही बेहतर होता है क्लीन एयर स्वच्छ वायु शुद्ध जल और ताजे फल ये मिल जाए तो और बात ही कुछ और होती है लेकिन आज उसी की कमी हो रही है इसलिए नेचुरल जॉय नैसर्गिक आनंद की प्राप्ति हमें प्राप्त हो सकती है परंतु वर्तमान समय में यह संभव कहां हो पा रहा है क्योंकि हमारे चारों ओर प्रदूषण बढ़ रहा है और वायु प्रदूषण सबसे बड़ा प्रदूषण है और स्वास्थ्य के लिए सबसे बड़ा खतरा भी यह ना केवल फेफड़ों को नुकसान पहुंचाता है बल्कि मस्तिष्क को भी नुकसान पहुंचाता है अभी गुलेरिया जी सारे नंबर्स दे रहे थे नंबर्स दे आर वेरी स्केरी दैट्स वी हैव टू बी केयरफुल इट इज इन अवर हैंड और हमारी दूसरी बात जो हमारी खेती है हमारी कृषि है वो भी तो सब इसी जलवायु पे ही तो आधारित है और उस पर भी बहुत प्रभाव पड़ता है इसलिए मुझे लगता है कि टूडे सम ज वेरी क्रुशियल एंड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बहुत जरूरी है और वायु की गुणवत्ता में सुधार ला के ना केवल हम अपने समाज की रक्षा कर सकते हैं बल्कि हम पूरे प्लैनेट को सुरक्षित कर सकते हैं देर कैन बी प्लान ए एंड प्लान बी बट देर इज नॉट अ प्लैनेट बी देर कैन नॉट बी प्लैनेट बी देर इज ओनली वन प्लैनेट एक ही तो प्लैनेट है अपने पास बस एक ही उपाय बचा है और वह है प्रकृति के अनुसार जीना लिविंग विद the nature we have to change our lifestyle nahi to woh din dur nahi hai jab hame botal band pani abhi to botal band pani hai usi ki tarz pe botal band hawa tata chote chote bachon ko school bag ke sath sath oxygen cylinder bhi lagane pad sakte hain kya ye acha lagega kabhi bhi nahi isliye ye summit bahut zaruri hai iske liye hum global interfaith वाश अलायस के माध्यम से समय समय पर सभी धर्म गुरुओं के साथ इस प्रकार के कार्य करते हैं ताकि परमार्थ निकेतन ऋषिकेश में विश्व प्रसिद्ध गंगा आरती में प्रतिदिन धरती पर बढ़ते वायु प्रदूषण अन्य प्रदूषणों एवं उनके उपायों पर भी उसके जागरण के लिए उसको संकल्प कराने के लिए हम लोग रोज आह्वान करते हैं लोगों को इंस्पायर करते हैं भैया जागो करो संकल्प मिलो सारे साथ में और अपनी प्रकृति को बचाओ केवल कम से कम अपने बच्चों के लिए तो बचाओ आज के समय में एक समस्या और है प्रकृति और औद्योगिकरण इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन का कोई बैलेंस ही नहीं है इनबैलेंस हो रहा है इसलिए उसमें बैलेंस करना जरूरी है क्योंकि ये इनबैलेंस जो है नेचुरल इनबैलेंस मानव समाज को विनाश की ओर ले जा रहा है मुझे तो लगता है कि हमें वायु प्रदूषण को कम करने के लिए सरकार के साथ साथ गैर सरकारी संगठन आम आदमी पूरा नागरिक हर पूरा समाज की भागीदारी को प्रोत्साहित करना पड़ेगा प्रत्येक नागरिक अगर अपनी जिम्मेदारी और जवाबदेही को समझेगा ना और सहयोग करेगा तो पक्का मानिए काम बन जाएगा और ये बिना जन सहयोग के नियंत्रित कर पाना बहुत ही असंभव है इसके साथ ही प्रदूषण को पाठ्यक्रम में शामिल करके मुझे लगता है कि बच्चों में भी हमें सोचना होगा कि ये ये जागृति लानी होगी 
कि हम अपने आसपास की हवा को कैसे शुद्ध रखें कैसे इसको प्रदूषण मुक्त बनाएं हम पैसों की बहुत बड़ी इंपॉर्टेंट बात मैं बता रहा हूं आज हम पैसों की बैलेंस शीट तो बनाते हैं ध्यान से सुनिएगा हम पैसों की बैलेंस शीट तो बनाते हैं पर मुझे तो लगता है टाइम हज कम समय आ गया है अब हमें रोज एक ऐसी बैलेंस शीट डेली बैलेंस शीट बनानी पड़ेगी जो हमारे दिन भर में हमने कितना प्लास्टिक का उपयोग किया मेरी दैनिक डेली एक्टिविटीज के द्वारा मैंने कितना परिवहन को प्रदूषित किया और इस प्रदूषण को क्या मैं कम कर सकता हूं जिसे भी हम अपनी दिनचर्या में ये शामिल कर लेंगे अपनी दिनचर्या को बदल लेंगे बात बन जाएगी और इसके लिए किसी एक को नहीं हर व्यक्ति को अपने विचार अपना आहार अपना व्यवहार और अपनी सोच में भी परिवर्तन लाना होगा और यही परिवर्तन सस्टेनेबल होगा साथ ही सरकार को भी चाहिए कि फैक्ट्रियों को लाइसेंस देने से पहले कम से कम बाबा उसकी गुणवत्ता की तो जांच करा लो कर रहे हैं आजकल तो बहुत तेजी से हो रहा है हमारे आदरणीय जावड़ेकर जी ने काफी सारे नियम बनाए हैं पर मैं चाहूंगा इन नियमों का पालन भी उसी ईमानदारी से हो तो मैं अपने देश के साथ वफादारी करनी है तो हमें ईमानदार होना होगा प्रत्येक नागरिक को स्वच्छ पर्यावरण में जीने का अधिकार है ये हमारा संविधान कहता है उसमें उल्लेख है कि पर्यावरण की रक्षा तथा उसमें सुधार करना भारत के प्रत्येक नागरिक का कर्तव्य होगा ये लिखा है उसमें कि वो जंगलों को वनों को झीलों को नदियों को और वन्य जीव जितना भी सारा नेचुरल एनवायरमेंट है उसकी रक्षा और उसका सुधार कार्य सबको करना होगा और तथा साथ ही साथ बिकॉज वी बिलीव इन लिविंग बींग्स तो जीवित प्राणियों के प्रति भी दया का भाव रखना तो विकास के नाम पे जितने पेड़ काटे जा रहे हैं उससे दोगुने पौधे का रोपण होना चाहिए वी मस्ट प्लांट डबल द प्लांट्स वेन यू आर हैविंग ए ट्री प्लांटेशन प्रोग्राम जो जितने वर्ष पुराने पेड़ हैं अगर उनको बचाया जा सके क्योंकि वो ऑक्सीजन देने वाले और कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड गैस का शोषण करने वाले बड़े पावरफुल टूल्स हैं थ्री आर द ग्रेट टूल्स इसलिए उनको बचाएं और दोगुने पौधे लगाएं और जो लगाएं वो पांच वर्षों तक उसको बचाए रखें इसका भी संकल्प लें परमार्थ निकेतन में हम इसका रोज संकल्प कराते हैं वायु प्रदूषण क्योंकि ऐसी समस्या है जो इसके द्वारा ही उसका निदान मिल सकता है और भी बहुत सारे कारण है जिसको अकेले सरकार नहीं बल्कि पूरा समाज मिलकर करे और इसकी मुक्ति का उपाय मुझे तो एक ही लगता है समन्वित प्रयत्न सह अस्तित्व सहभागिता जागरूकता जिम्मेदारी और जवाबदेही ये सारे गुण हम धीरे धीरे अपना लें तो मुझे लगता है ये कॉन्फ्रेंस भी सफल है हमारा प्रयास भी सफल है क्योंकि अगर हम सबको स्वच्छ हवा चाहिए तो अपने स्तर पर हर व्यक्ति को योगदान करना पड़ेगा और यही एक रास्ता है इसे हमें अपनाना पड़ेगा और जो हमें प्रकृति से प्राप्त हुआ है शुद्धता वो स्वच्छता का वातावरण हमें आने वाली पीढ़ियों को भी प्राप्त हो सके इसके लिए हम सभी को अपने अपने स्तर पर उपाय करना होगा कोई देखे ना देखे कोई पुलिस डंडा लेके ना पीछे आए बल्कि हमें अपने मन का एक दंड लेकर सामने चलना होगा कि नहीं मैं खुद को दंडित करूंगा हमें अधिक से अधिक वृक्षों का रोपण एकल उपयोग प्लास्टिक का प्रयोग बंद करना होगा आतिशबाजी जैसे इन प्रयोगों को भी ध्यान से देखना पड़ेगा क्योंकि उससे भी काफी पोल्यूशन होता है और कचरे का जलाना है इसको भी ध्यान देना है ग्रीन क्रिमेटोरियम ग्रीन कॉरिडोर ग्रीन बिजनेस ग्रीन इंडिया ऑर्गेनिक इंडिया जैविक भारत जैसे जितने भी कार्यक्रम है इन सबको हमें अपनाना होगा और इसके लिए लास्ट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इसके लिए फोर ई प्रोग्राम वी मस्ट क्रिएट सो मच इंफॉर्मेशन फॉर दोज पीपल हु आर नॉट अवेयर ऑफ इट इंफॉर्मेशन इंस्पिरेशन इनोवेशन एंड इंप्लीमेंटेशन इसे हम अपनाएंगे तो बहुत बड़ा काम होगा दूसरा हमारे पास फोर टीज प्रोग्राम हो फोर ईज एंड फोर टीज वो है मेरा टाइम मेरा टैलेंट मेरी टेक्नोलॉजी और मेरी टेनासिटी पर्यावरण के लिए समर्पित हो बस यही तो चाहिए गुड ईयर इस समिट के आयोजक और एकीकृत स्वास्थ्य और कल्याण परिषद ग्लोबल इंटरफेथ वाश अलायंस जीवा और सभी आप लोग सभी पदाधिकारीगण पर्यावरण वन एवं जलवायु परिवर्तन मंत्री भारत सरकार 
Shri Prakash Javadekar Ji, or our Honorable Justice, a very, very honest judge, former chairperson of National Green Tribunal and former Judge Supreme Court of India, Shri Swatantra Kumar Ji, our actor, producer, UN Environment Ki Goodwill Ambassador, United Nations Secretary General Ki Advocate for Sustainable Development Goals Ki, our Diya Mirja Ji, who came here, took Ganga Ke Hinaare Jhaadu Utha Li, और खुद लग गई हमारे डायरेक्टर जनरल एनर्जी एंड रिसोर्सेज इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ अजय माथुर जी ये सब जितने भी और आवर डियर वॉलेंटाइन क्लाइमेट एंड क्लीन एयर कोलेशन सेक्रेटरीट यूनाइटेड नेशंस के डायरेक्टर और डायरेक्टर एम्स नई दिल्ली के जिनसे अभी हमने सबसे पहले सुना और अपने जो डॉक्टर रणवीर गुलेरिया जी और साथ ही साथ सीओ आई एच डब्ल्यू काउंसिल श्री कमल नारायण जी और सभी पैनलिस्ट आपने बहुत बढ़िया काम किया है मुझे बड़ी प्रसन्नता है मैं सबका धन्यवाद करता हूं परमार्थ निकेतन ऋषिकेश फॉर दिस ग्रेट कॉज इज विद यू लेट अस वर्क टुगेदर वर्क टुगेदर एंड फॉर द ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी इज द ओनली मंत्रा द टुगेदरनेस इंक्लूसिवनेस इज द मंत्रा लेट अस बी टुगेदर एंड चेंज अवर प्लैनेट एंड चार्ज अवर प्लैनेट थैंक यू थैंक यू एंड थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच स्वामी जी धन्यवाद आपने बहुत इनकरेजिंग शब्द बोले बहुत जो आपने कहा कि जन भागीदारी और सहभागिता सबकी ये बहुत जरूरी है और ये बहुत जरूरी है कि हम इस धरती के इस पृथ्वी के गार्जियन और कस्टोडियन बने ना कि एक्सप्लॉयटर जो कि आज हम सब जो रोल कर रहे हैं सो थैंक यू सो मच फॉर योर वेरी वेरी इंस्पायरिंग एंड यू नो स्पीच फुल ऑफ lot of uh, learnings and blessings uh, let me now invite uh, dr ajay mathur uh, uh, dr mathur uh, you know so we heard about the 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 health burden we heard about that why we need uh, and may need to make that uh, the the eco friendliness the environment consciousness has to become part of our life and that's what we have to you know imbibe in ourselves uh from the industry from the government from the policy from the international perspective you are you know uh, playing a very instrumental role in all that what do you uh, you know what would you like to share why this has become such a problem that we are not able to find any solution for covid 19 we had solution we don't have solution for good air or for air pollution kamal thank you very much justice swatantra kumar ji पूज्य स्वामी चितानंद सरस्वती जी वैलेंटिन दिया मिर्जा साधवी भगवती सरस्वती इट्स अ प्लेशर टू सी यू अगेन राजीव फ्रेंड्स आई वुड लाइक टू फोकस ऑन द फैक्ट दैट थैंक्स टू जस्टिस स्वतंत्र कुमार एक्शन वी आर बिगिनिंग टू सी अ ग्लिमर ऑफ होप आई विल इट्स नॉट सी से लाइट but a glimmer of hope at the end of the tunnel i would like to share with you what my thoughts are today and for the purposes of uh, uh for the purposes of uh, uh making myself clear i will use a few figures and therefore seek your uh, permission to uh, use a powerpoint and to show you the numbers the first thing that i would like to say is that these are findings that are based on the work of my colleagues at terry uh, i have also been honored to join the recently created commission on air quality management for the ncr adjoining areas but i am speaking independently of that whatever i am saying are the results that come out of our analysis Uh, as i will just say to you the first point that i would like to focus on is that one of the things that we have observed is that in delhi depending on the month of the year only 15 to 27% of the of the pollution is because of emissions that occur in delhi the rest is what flows from the rest of the ncr what flows from the states upstream of uh, 
uh, upstream of Delhi, what flows in from the west, because that's the governing wind direction. This is an issue that I would like to leave with you as a message. But the second message that I want to leave with you is that this contribution has declined. This contribution has declined from, uh, from about 26 to 37%. Remember, it's now 15 to 27%. It used to be 26 to 37% only three years ago. We have seen this large decline. Why is this decline occurred? It has occurred because of a number of interventions that have been carried out. And that is my main reason for thanking Justice Sotantar Kumar, who has he played such a sterling role in pushing ahead the kinds of actions that were necessary to move this. I would like to argue that as a country, we have been devastated personally and as a country by the pollution that is there. And that has caused all of us to act. We have acted on our own, but more importantly, we have acted together as a nation. And this is the results that we are beginning to see. Is this the end then? No, it isn't. Because what it is showing is that while we have started working in the geographical jurisdiction, in the administrative jurisdiction, which is called the National Capital Territory of Delhi, we have not seen equivalent actions outside this region, but in the same air basin. And what I, one of the things that we are seeing is that the level of what are called the secondary particulates have increased in Delhi. What are secondary particulates? When fires burn in Punjab, the paddy burning, there isn't very much pollution there. There are hot fires, the gases rise up, and as the gases rise up and travel, they go through a lot of chemistry. But one of the key issues in that chemistry is that they get the gases combine and they form particles. And those particles fall here. This is secondary particulates are now almost 25% of the pollution in Delhi. This is a major issue. And therefore, what is important is not only that we address what we can do, we should and we should continue to, but we also need to enable a, 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 a process, enable a system through which actions in other parts of this air basin can also be taken. I said earlier that we have seen that each one of us is active. It is not only in Delhi. We have seen this across the country. I will show you two satellite imagery pictures of India, and then you compare them, and then you put them on top of each other. And what you see is that we see a decline in pollution almost across the country. This is, you know, what the satellite sees is something called an aerosol optical depth. And you see the op uh, aerosol optical depth declining in many parts of the country, but it also increases in some parts. It's increasing in the Punjab. It's also increasing in parts of South India. Our preliminary finding is that biomass burning is being replaced, which is why you are seeing this decline. But on the other hand, industrial pollution is increasing, which is why you see the increase. I think as we look to the future, we will need to look at, at enhancing actions which address both these issues, biomass burning and industrial pollution. So what is it that we can do? And this is very much Delhi related. We looked at the kinds of actions which give the maximum amount of benefit in terms of air pollution. Uh, my colleagues run a very detailed model of the, which geographically places where the emissions are, including dispersed emissions, and a pic map of Delhi, and a map of the main air directions across the hours of the year, and then see what is the kind of pollution that exists in various places. Where is it coming from? Very, very clearly, one of the things that we need to do is to phase out old cars. Now, BS4 is relatively recent. Uh, people will say, I don't want to phase it out, but 
believe you me the kind see today ds4 vehicles account for something of the order of depending on the time of the year from 12 to 18% of the emissions this is large we need to find out ways in which we can progressively see how they go I mean, and certainly i think we should have incentives for ds2 vehicles who are which some of which are still around but will disappear very soon for those to disappear as well because of the pandemic and as swami ji said the pandemic and the lockdown is not something we would like to happen but one of the things we have learned is to work from home and at times when the pollution is very severe to reduce transport we should start thinking of working from home i would strongly argue that this is an area where we should each one of us whether as a worker or as a supervisor should encourage work from home under these situations i would suggest that when the uh, air quality in delhi becomes severe people should be encouraged to work from home i would also argue that we need to look at the issue of agricultural burning much more on this in a couple of slides but one of the things that we could do is convert the agricultural waste into coke tori torified uh, uh, agricultural waste of briquettes these could be put into power plants and unless a coal based power plant within 300 kilometers of delhi unless a power plant uses this coal based power plants should be advised not to operate during the winter months of the year this would substantially reduce the pollution in delhi the third issue that i would like to focus on is the use of gas for domestic cooking a very large number of households outside delhi not in the ncr not in the delhi capital region not in the government of delhi region but in the ncr in rajasthan in haryana in punjab a lot of households still use biomass for cooking most of these households have got connections to lpg but we see that the refill rate is relatively low how do we increase it my colleagues surveyed these households and found that there were there are many reasons but the two principal reasons are one the household doesn't have enough money and this would argue that at least at this time of the year for very poor households for below poverty level households provide a cylinder or two cylinders over 90 days or 180 or 120 days or four months provide one or two cylinders free of cost or at a really subsidized cost of maybe 300 rupees or something of that sort but the second reason that we found was that it took one week to 10 days for the gas cylinder to be refilled so if i have a gas cylinder and it finishes it takes me two a week to two weeks to get it refilled this is very much like what i remember happened in our family when we moved to lpg in the late 70s the answer to this is also well known provide a second cylinder there is a second full cylinder as soon as the first cylinder finishes you switch over to the second cylinder and then if it takes one week or 10 days to fill it up that's fine but providing the second cylinder becomes an important issue we have the another point that we have seen is that all the municipal uh, corporations of delhi have bought vacuum machines these are being used on the streets but they are being more used more efficiently in some of the uh, districts than in others optimization of the routes so that they cover the maximum amount of the street area is important this is one of the key reasons why local air quality and base become better we need to focus on enhancing this even more there are a number of other issues uh, i will focus on the fact that there is a range of actions that have been done there is a range of actions which is still can be done to move ahead let us look at some of those actions both in the short term and in the long term so if we look at the medium and long term actions 
whether it is the transport or residential <clears throat> or whether it is dust control industry power stations in all of these areas there are interventions that are possible today they have been pushed i think what we need to do is to make sure that number one they are employed and number two make sure that the kinds of challenges that are there in implementing them are addressed for example we have seen a large amount of time that it has taken for the thermal power stations in the delhi region <clears throat> to move to the new and more stringent emission norms so that they emit less but that has been extended it has been extended and now in the delhi region we are looking at december 2021 march 2022 and december 2022 for the power stations to move to these new norms my own feeling is it is time for us to say that mr power station it is in your interest your workers your officers live in this area it is in your interest to switch this off unless you are using a uh, uh, proper residue based fuel we also need to push electric buses for many many reasons pollution is just one of the reasons but these are now cheaper through through tenders we have found that the price that you pay for an electric bus is less than 60 rupees a kilometer which that we pay for a cng bus we need to quickly enhance the capability to up, absorb and produce and scale up the use of electric buses these are actions that will take time but if we don't start them now we will never get done let me end by focusing on the key issue which is the biomass burning we see the number of fires the number of fires this year have far exceeded the fires last year and the uh, view outside that dr guleria pointed to is a reflection of the fact that it has been moving in this direction how can we reduce this my own view is that we need to push in situ the happy seeders the fertilization as much as possible but our research has shown that this can add best take care of one third of the paddy waste that is used two thirds is still there what do we do with it the first thing i think we need to do is to move it away because if it is it continues to be there it will be burnt so that the field is available for wheat to be sown you have a 15 day window in this 15 days the paddy waste has to be picked up and put in storage somewhere huge challenge so the first issue is we need to incentivize uh, private entrepreneurs to do this private entrepreneurs will not do it if they don't make money but i think we need to incentivize that that way the second is what do we do with it i gave one example torrefy it into coke or create it into briquettes that can be used in power stations if you also say power stations can only work if they are using this in whatever percentage that provides an incentive for the power stations to use it at the same time they can be used in a number of other things the biomass can be used to produce cng the ministry of petroleum and natural gas has a program for converting this biomass into cng which can be used for transport fuel we can use it through you know you gasify the biomass and the gas is burnt and used to run a cold storage the hot gas in an ammonia absorption cycle you don't have to go through the compressor cycle which needs electricity without electricity from direct heat we can run a cold storage it works there are commercial cold storages running on this principle the key issue is banks need to provide loan for this and we have to have skilled manpower to be able to do it but all of this is predicated on the fact that it is collected in time it is stored in time this needs both regulatory orders as well as the creation of markets who why is there a need for this i will argue that because this reduces co2 amongst other things co2 production because you are using biomass which grows again and again so it's net zero 
but in the process when you use it you are re reducing coal it makes great sense to convert this into a market have emission reduction certificates and those certificates could then be utilized by people who want offsets for example the airlines who under the corsia regime have to move to net zero carbon emissions by 2024 i believe we have things in place we need the kinds of regulatory and institutional mechanisms to make that happen so that's our next step i think we are moving in the right direction we need to accelerate our action thank you very much thank you so much dr mathur for uh, highlighting so many technical aspects of this uh, the specter of hedge which we see every year shrouding us around and uh, i'm sure that uh, you know as you have already appreciated that there are multiple action have already been taken and lot more can be taken and this can will be uh, taken forward by the relevant authorities uh, let me now uh, invite and i think a lot of our viewers might be waiting for that moment also so let me invite uh, tia mirza uh, now uh, to 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 share her uh, you know uh, uh, you know views that how and how each one of us can contribute into reducing uh, this air pollution and also uh, playing a more responsible role in overall promoting the nature the environment and everything that we have you know kind of inherited from this uh, uh, this mother mother nature and uh, 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 on this earth so thank you so much uh, dia for joining us and you know please share your views with us and with our audience thank you so much good afternoon everyone all the respected panelists have heard many of you speak and uh, i was actually thinking it's hard to follow up on so many things that you've already said because you've established and established so well what it is that we need to consider what it is that we need to understand better about not just the fact that we are polluted breathing polluted air and how it impacts our lives and our well-being every day but the actions that we can take um i think that uh, dr randeep guleria demonstrated and spoke about numbers that should alarm us uh, because it is not until that we actually take cognizance of the fact that the numbers are glaring they are extremely um worrying and have been uh, affecting uh, communities and families and lives for many years now and we do need collective action to change this i think the first thing that we will all acknowledge is the fact that when we started campaigning to beat air pollution um even before the clean air coalition was formed in india and the good work now also that is being done by the integrated health and well being council uh, and many other non government organizations um and the activism that they've been uh, doing over the last 5 10 years there were many states and governments that refused to acknowledge that the air was polluted and that was a fundamental problem the big difference is that in the last 5 years because of the good work done by these one wonderful organizations but essentially by the powerful work done by women and children governments have finally acknowledged that the air is bad it is killing people and it is going to affect millions of lives and it is affecting millions of lives i think that in itself means that you have to be able to acknowledge a problem to find a solution for it so uh the fact that this problem has been acknowledged makes a difference now i know that um ajay ji has uh, pointed out to certain solutions but he spoke spoke mainly about delhi i, I would like to remind everyone that who's watching this because we are talking about acknowledging the problem right um 14 of the 21 most polluted cities in the world are in india that means that not only is delhi but many other cities 
towns and villages are deeply affected and impacted by evolution and um swami ji spoke about consciousness empathy and um understanding that our lives and our health are deeply connected with the environment uh and i think that this is something that i've tried to use through my advocacy over the last 10 years but essentially that change in that understanding comes from experiencing the problem and understanding what it does to you and to us uh i have i'm sure many of us have children who go to school who have to stay at home because the air quality is so toxic that they can't breathe that air but what worries me more than the fact that children don't go to school are the children who live in the streets who breathe this toxic air year round who do not have air purifiers at home um i think it is very important for us to heighten our levels of empathy and genuinely start considering long term solutions uh and those of course include solutions that have been highlighted by the united nations environment program but swami ji also touched upon them and uh, so did ajay ji i'm just going to remind everyone what those are uh switching to renewables is a big and a very important sustainable step and i know that children have been advocating this vigorously and i hope that children will continue to put the pressure on policy makers on governments and on inter- industries to switch to renewables we have to phase out coal we have to phase out any industry that is uh, emitting high levels of pollutants and switch to clean energy and renewables the second thing that i think is a big problem that we do not acknowledge enough is the role that real estate plays you know we're not when we talk about industry we just talk about industry we think about factories but i think the real estate um people who are building our are constructing our homes and our buildings and our roads and they they are flouting norms every day this has to be seriously uh acknowledged and uh, there has to be a very strong implementation of the law the laws exist but there has to be a very strong implementation of the law these people need to be held accountable for the uh, levels of pollution that they're contributing to the environment um and uh, they have to be encouraged to switch to greener construction models and cre- greener construction um systems the third thing that we need to change and we can change very swiftly is the fact that we burn our waste we have we, we talk about encouraging rwas to provide heaters to watchmen because it bothers us to see that they are burning uh garbage and wood and plastic sometimes to keep themselves warm during the winter months as were a lot of people who have no income who live on us in street situations we see them do this we want to find ways to stop that from happening but we haven't spoken about the level of pollution that is contributed by burning of waste every single day and i know all the young children who are watching this will do everything that they can to ensure people stop burning waste so the next time you see somebody burning kachra please stop them please educate them and please inform the civic bodies um waste burning is a very big contributor to air pollution and soil pollution the the uh, since we're talking about waste i think this is something that many young children have been talking about and have also managed to implement at home and i'm going to highlight this we don't talk about the connection between waste management and air pollution enough and there is a big big connection here um we need to ensure that we segregate waste at source we must compost our green waste our biodegradable waste at home we must ensure that our dry waste is segregated and is you know uh, managed better um we have a set of rules in our country on waste management 
I believe uh, with 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 absolute certainty that these rules need to be converted into a law. We need a set of laws to ensure that the waste in our country is managed better because the rules are not helping. And um, and now, of course, with the pandemic, we've realized what a big um, reality again we are confronted by we had achieved so much success in helping bring about behavioral change and helping people understand how they can refuse single use plastics and now the pandemic has brought in a whole new set of single use plastics which people are using uh, whether it is plastic disposable gloves or you know the single use disposable masks or even the PPE kits which Many people don't need to be using, but are using. They do not know how to manage that or where to get rid of it. So there's there's what you call biomedical waste, but then there is also a lot of single-use plastic that civil society is using irresponsibly and not managing efficiently. And, and when we think about and consider the quantum of waste we are generating and the fact that we are not holding our industries accountable for the waste they're introducing into the market, but we're also the only way we can genuinely make a difference when it comes to waste management is if we have laws. We need a strong set of laws. The rules are not enough. People are not implementing the rules. They're not following it. Um, but citizens can make a big difference by segregating waste at source and refusing all single-use plastic. The fourth contributor, or the fourth thing that can bring down air pollution considerably is to ensure we increase green cover and we ensure and we ensure that existing green cover, existing forests, existing trees are not chopped down and are not destroyed. You know, we are such an arrogant species. We think we can do nature's work, but we cannot. Nature has taken hundreds and thousands of years to do the good work to provide us with rich, healthy soils and water and clean air. And human beings have the arrogance to think that we can just mess it up and clean it up. It's not that simple. So let's, while of course, we must be all encouraged to grow more trees and it's a wonderful way to celebrate life and anniversaries and birthdays and happy occasions. Um, it's equally, in, 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 you know, important for us to protect existing biodiversity, to protect existing tree cover and ensure that these are not chopped down in the name of development or growth because no growth is possible without eco ecological balance and there is enough science now that is accessible to young children and people and i'm telling you what gives me great strength every single day is to see the wisdom with which children are responding to our problems because they have access to the science they respond from a place of empathy and they convert that empathy into action every day. And I meet young children across the country who are coming up with solutions, who are planting trees, who are ma creating waste, waste management systems, who are questioning policy, who are holding governments accountable. And I think that this is hugely important to ensure that we move towards a more sustainable system that will clean up our air and our water and our soils and bring back the ecological balance that we need to survive. Because it's not a question of just good health or peace or harmony or progress. It's now a question of human survival. And I think we need to respond to our problems with the same level of urgency and empathy and efficiency that we would if we discovered that a member in our family is faced by death. Um, so yes, these summits are important. These conversations are important. But what is even more important is action. Action is the magic word. We need to keep adopting lifestyle 
uh, lifestyles and keep holding polluters accountable, questioning, and yes, push and move for laws that are stronger and more robust and ensure the implementation of these. And I'm very sure that um, uh, whatever I may not have touched upon, Valentin will. Uh, and I can't wait to hear you speak, Valentin. Thank you, uh, Swamiji. And thank you, Ajayji. Um, and thank you so much to everybody who's been a part of this summit. I hope that we can continue to work together to reduce pollution, air pollution, and environmental degradation with the resolve and the understanding that all our lives are connected and that when we work together, we can truly bring change as has been evident in so many cases in the recent past. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, dear Mirza, for your you know, wonderful insights and also for encouraging, uh, especially our children, to, to not only just limit with the awareness, but also, you know, adapt that those actions which are important to uh, restore that that harmony with the, the, the environment and which is essential to restore all that is, you know, important for our life. Uh, now I would, before I go to Valentin to give a overall perspective, both Indian and global, uh, I would request our head of advisory board and somebody who has actually you know led the the fight against anything and everything which 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 is not green or which was hampering the ecology the environment the the air of this not only uh, you know the, the delhi region but also the entire country so let me invite uh, justice honorable retired justice sutant kumar ji to address the the gathering and the audience who are watching us distinguished and respected panelists, all the attendees of this webinar. Firstly, I may pay my compliments to Mr. Kamandanayan for having ventured into such a topic first. And secondly, for touching upon the class of our country, which is the material cut class and which is worst affected by the air pollution issues of the present day. I would just open my talk with one simple sentence that we cannot think of environment in state terms, in terms of multi-state, or even at the national level. When we talk of environment, and particularly air pollution, it has to be a global thinking. You may try to remedy at your national levels, but your approach has to be global. I would just give you three instances which came across in my career when I was dealing with the air pollution matters with regard to severity and bad adverse health impacts on air, the humanity. You know, one, ARD just pointed out the relevancy of municipal solid waste in relation to air pollution. Well, I would definitely like to inform that we have enough laws. We don't need laws in our country. What we need is what she said, is the action is the key word that I do agree. Laws, I think there are innumerable laws in our country and globally, which relate to prevention and control of air pollution. So municipal solid waste relevancy, why I'm giving you this example, which came across in a matter before me, because it is fundamentally an economic issue. See, the health priority would be a matter of consideration for somebody after he has earned the bread for the day. Now, plastic burning, who doesn't know that it is cancerous? Who doesn't know? that it's going to cause you death right in your face. 
for those young boys collect plastic all over the city from the trains and then what happens is you have three classes of plastics you have first class of plastic which you know will generate money for you second is which may get you some money but not the right full amount and third is which is totally wasted and it's a liability for him that young boy who has to earn his livelihood by the evening maybe even for his family so what does he do what he does is saleable he sells reducible saleable he tries to part away but the rest which remains with him as a junk he has no time he has no utility for himself that he carries it out takes to a factory which deals with the plastic waste channelization and treatment and therefore take that precaution because that is what you call doctrine of precaution in the jurisprudence of environment so what he does is he burns that plastic straight and simple so he's made his money the damage he had to do is too now what do we do that's the question now you know therefore when we say that we should determine the sources of pollution and when you determine the sources of pollution you must find out and dissect your action into two parts one is the end product prevention and precautions and right at the source so this is a matter which files for precautions at the source what you need to do is that if he sells out the saleable plastic which is recyclable that's fair let him do it but the part which he wants to burn you should have a system either the state government should do it ngo should do it society should do it and as it was pointed out rwas may do it they should immediately pick that plastic up because see let me tell you i say I, i hope these young children do understand what law is see our country is the best country in the world who has placed environment constitutionally at such a pedestal that it has a constitutional obligation on the citizens constitutional duty on the state and article 21 by judicial creativity was increased to say right to decent and clean environment is a fundamental right free of restriction because article 21 is free of restriction therefore if that is the constitutional status then why can't everybody get together and we will have to work together and work together as citizens as local authorities as state government central government and the municipalities and most importantly the panchayat because we are a ruler state nation we are not a urban nation now the second thing which i wanted to tell you was that you know the central pollution control board the highest body of our pollution control system in the country you know when these trucks vehicular traffic pollution levels were being checked they had no instrument that they could check the pollution of a running vehicle now see once the moment the vehicle is stationary its pollution level will straight away come down they may be absolutely normal but what mistake the people do in our country is they overload those trucks and they overload to the extent that emissions go totally haywire so but unfortunately the pollution control board had no mechanism to measure the basic parameters of co2 noxes or other parameters so what we need to do is bring our technologies right up to a source where we can correct without default all these matters the thirdly which i was and which was very interesting for me to see was that dr trehan had send me a video when i was doing that case and i think i should compliment him for what he did you know he had done two open heart surgeries one open heart surgery was done on a patient from delhi other was done from a patient from himachal then he sent me the picture of the lungs both lungs of the patients 
the lung of the himachal patient was pink while of delhi patient it was black so that was the living standard over which you have no idea what is happening to your health as justice guleria just now pointed out that you may not be able to see it you can only see it after damage is done beyond a particular limit or a repair so therefore what we need to do is that we should become very very health conscious leading to environmental clearances now i tell you this is a topic which you can probably deliberate upon for hours together and i am sure like swami ji said it mr ajay has said it you know dr guleria said it and i'm sure the other experts would also throw light on it see the statistics data is not in dispute and so everybody knows lakhs are dying question is that what collective steps as a nation we are going to take in consonance with our international commitments to make sure that we are able to protect air pollution now mr ajay was talking about the house the crop residue burning now crop residue burning has more solution than what is by it can be as pointed out a source of fuel for the thermal plants fair enough but at the same time you can generate boards out of it you can do wood work out of it it can be utilized for framing of lot of thing so there was a order prepared and that order said that you have to have procured the crop residue from the farmer's field itself see even if you give him 10 pesos for it the he will be happy he will not like to burn but if you have no mechanism in place which will assist those particular small field owner farmers so that they can deal with the residue you cannot blame them indefinitely and you know let's say there is a farmer of 2 acres or 3 acres you know he burns the crop residue you know you want to hunt and find him crore what will you do crore where will you get the crore from you can send him to jail if you want him to so you ruin his family also so you know you have to find out solutions which are practical pragmatic and holistic and i would definitely agree with swami ji when he said that it is the duty you must take prevention precaution and environmental protection as your holy duty duty consciousness will bring the cause to a next level and pedestrian now just let look at i don't say that there is not any problem is unsolvable see the god is so kind to us that he gives us reasons solutions for every problem that we humanity create for ourselves so i do not believe that the pollution air pollution problem is irresolvable or you cannot do it you need to do in all let's say there are three agencies that is the regulatory agency policy makers and the citizens they have different functions to do with regard to environment if all of them get together and they resolve and you know we are a country highly populated in the world if we decide to do something i wonder anything can stop us and our you know heritage is so rich we are worshippers of rivers we are worshippers of trees we are worshippers of mountains we are worshipper of animals and so why can't we protect all of them and you know this i have a very strong uh, view on this matter that the concept of tree plantation is being misunderstood in the modern times absolutely you know it doesn't mean that you will plant some you know 1 lakh trees and you have a right to cut 10 lakhs of old 50 years trees this is totally violation of precautionary principle it is unsustainable it is impossible that what those 50000 old trees will do 1 lakh new planted trees can ever do it will be a gap of 20 years 25 years 30 years so for those 25 years you have created a vacuum in that vacuum 
the people who are going to suffer is the common man on the earth you know you may be traveling in a mercedes you may be traveling in any thing you may be living in a seven storied house but you do need clean air to breathe the moment you will get down from your car you need to breathe pure and simple air which is god gift which is never nature's gift it is not a creation of a human being so firstly i would definitely say that these all three agencies should have a compatibility of functioning in achieving the objects of air pollution control they must adopt due technologies across the world which will prevent and it may be seriously thought of whether what we are calling today as a clean source of energy you know that is the wind power or the solar power you know i was told that solar panel itself is going to become a huge source of pollution by the passage of time and the solar remnant of a solar panel are hardly treatable they cannot be disposed of it is like plastic you know which take 20 years to dismantle or to absorb so if we when we are talking of clean energy we must also think that how far we will be able to take it i we should surely make it you know that's why the environmental jurisprudence across the globe is based on three principles that is the precautionary principle polluter pays principle and the sustainable development now you have to combine these three doctrines to make anything worthy so that you do not cause irreparable and absolute loss to the nature and then you can also see that the basic thing is we should have the line between environmental sensitivity and environmental insensitivity is a very thin one it's a very fine distinction between the two what appears to be sensitive may in fact be very insensitive to environment so we have to approach a very strong sustainable development approach otherwise disasters are there what happened in uttarakhand what happened in simla what has happened in himachal pradesh you know what is happening across when we get the cyclones this all is indicative of that don't tinkle with nature too much because mother nature once gives you back you have no power to tolerate it mother nature absorbs a lot but don't misuse the power or the depth of mother nature to absorb your unnecessary interference with the natural resources lastly i would only say one thing that education to create environmental consciousness environmental awareness and benefits of environmental protection is very essential it must be done at the school level at the primary level at the law colleges level i was very happy to note i happened to be on the advisory board of a university in chandigarh i was very happy the day they passed a resolution on my request that environmental sciences would be taught taught as a subject across the board in all discipline even if you are an engineer you will learn environment if you are an mba you will learn environment if you are a commerce student you will learn environment and if you are a scientist you will learn environment and if you are a hotelier mba you will learn so purpose is to create environmental awareness and i hope and i do agree with all the eminent uh, speakers that we all need to work together as a team not today not tomorrow not for years but for infinite times to ensure that we do respect mother nature and provide our children on the principle of intergenerational equity clean air clean water so that they don't have to lock themselves into the room and waste their infant time thank you everybody thank you ladies and gentlemen thank you so much uh, justice kumar for your 
wonderful, insightful address. And as you said, that uh, the accents for uh, cleaning the air, protecting the environment may be local, but we need to have a, a global approach. So let me now then invite uh, Mr. Valentin Foltescu to to share with us that you know the, what 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 is then you know the global environmental perspective and how we as a nation can live up to that and ensure that while we clean our own air, we also contribute to the global well-being of the environment. Uh, thank you so much, and I would like to thank my co-panelists and and all the distinguished guests and all the participants, everyone present here. Um, I, I thank you for welcoming me to this, this, this day to, to talk about good air. And this is something that I would like to share with you um, is, 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 is a big dedication that we have in the UN Environment Program as well as the Climate and Clean Air Coalition to making India breathe. This is our commitment. It will not happen overnight, but we hope it will happen over the course of several years. Um, so thank you, thank you, Dia. Thank you all, all the my co-panelists for for your messages. They were all very, very inspirational. Um, and also, I concur to to the conclusion that implementation is actually here the challenge that we do have a lot of laws, and we need to to implement better. And this this situation is not only India; it's everywhere in the world. Now, how do we support that implementation? And what I would like to do here is to, to actually walk you through uh, our action portfolio so that you can see uh, what, what exactly, what are, what are the tangible things that uh, we are trying to do to support implementation and to, to bring back those blue skies that we saw during the lockdown uh, conditions. So um, uh, the United Nations Environment Program and the Climate and Clean Air Coalition have a presence here in India uh, to support the country's efforts to uh, tackle its serious air pollution problem. And a mani manifestation of that, today we have air pollution levels which are almost 30 times the recommended uh, value in Delhi. Uh, this, is, this is quite alarming. So uh, how do we go about to, to support the implementation uh, we are talking about a global approach to local needs again, um, and it has to be a multi-prone approach with um, uh, multiple layers of governments involved, multiple sectors, and of course the citizens. Uh, so let me let me go through uh, what we are doing in UNEP and CCAC. Uh, it has been mentioned that. Plastic is a problem and there is a link to air pollution. Actually, UNEP is making that link, supporting plastic waste management, management to prevent pollution to air, water, and soil by hotspot mapping for plastic pollution cleanups and awareness campaigns. UNEP is also supporting uh, clean air action in uh, cities and states. Uh, Agra is the most prominent exa example where we have invested most so far. Uh, we are doing that by uh, assessments of key pollution sources, capacity building and training, demonstration of policy recommendations, and again, awareness and mobilization of partnerships for interventions. Uh, UNEP is uh, supporting uh, the UP uh, transition to e-mobility um, and, of course, to... Uh, enable clean and reliable uh, electricity, also to, through mini and microgrids to livelihoods of people. And in this case, uh, it is a support to 100 pilot villages to be eventually scaled up to 10,000 villages in a partnership mode. We are starting small, but we are aiming big and with a lot of uh, contributions from other partners, we can reach to that scale. UNEP is also supporting the Environment and Health Ministries in coordinating the Environment and Health Initiatives. And the actual priorities of this initiative is air pollution and human health, uh, climate change, and uh, COVID response with respect to biomedical waste management, but also antimicrobial resistance. 
in India, uh, as we have learned today also, there is a lot of enthusiasm that is shown by, by faith-based organizations that come together for the cause of environmental action. And this has also motivated UNEP to come up with a strategy and a plan to work with faith-based organizations in a more structured and systematic manner for the cause of environmental protection. UNEP, uh, jointly with the Climate and Clean Air Coalition, have also proposed an air quality action forum to achieve a full coordination of national and international support to mitigate air pollution and to catalyze additional support by also linking to climate change mitigation. Uh, also, UNEP and CCAC together uh, will pilot a, a regular report uh, for um, uh, regular or annual uh, uh, dissemination about the air quality in India. Uh, that will present an overview and an analysis of air quality in India. It will be using uh, quality assured data from official data sources uh, in conjunction with uh, anthropogenic emissions and their trends. So it's not only air quality, it's, only air it's also air pollutant emissions. And we are also aiming at uh, closing the gap between uh, air quality and its links to climate change and uh, demonstrating uh, what can be done to, um, to reach uh, better air by, by also uh, reaching ulti ult uh, ultimately also other benefits or multiple benefits like climate change um, and, and, and also uh, develop sustainable development goals. And we will do this in a COVID-19 recovery context. CCAC has traditionally run projects in, uh, in, uh, in India, in, in, for instance, in the Punjab region, to facilitate the adoption of open burning, burning alternatives. Um, or um, we have been supporting the development of integrated strategies to reduce crop res residue burning but also reforming the BRICS sector, which is an important sector uh, that, um, that can be cleaned and can become um, uh, greener. And uh, in, the importance here that we have recognized is the, the skill development and also the promoting of research and, and development. Uh, CCAC, um, the Climate and Clean Air Coalition will also work in India on identification and embedding of uh, mitigation opportunities for short-lived climate pollutants. Short-lived climate pollutants are actually the common denominator between air pollution and climate change. Uh, in short, if you reduce the emission of short-lived climate pollutants, such as methane and black carbon, you will get both uh, cleaner air and, and uh, uh, um, uh, a smaller impact on climate change. So um, our goal is a thriving market for solutions, as I've been mentioned here before, that lead to significantly lower emissions of traditional air pollutants, but also of short-lived climate pollutants, and their co-emitted pollutants to deliver sustained uh, um, impacts on health and, and also climate. So, ladies and gentlemen, my message today, uh, before ending, is that air pollution and climate change are intrinsically linked through the emitting sectors and sources, and they should be addressed in in uh, in together rather than in isolation. So for this, we are working together with UNEP and the Climate and Clean Air Coalition uh, to, to solve um, air pollution and climate change, which are the world's largest environmental and health threats. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Poltescu, for your, uh, you know, uh, detailing that what all UNEP is doing and definitely uh, clean air has to be, or the air pollution agenda has to be linked with the, the climate change, uh, you know, agenda, and then only we can work and have a better outcome. So I would like to tell all our panelists and all our audience that 
uh, children are the center of our good year movement. We at ISW Council, while are advocating for actions which need to be taken by the government agencies, by regulatory, by the policy makers, we also firmly believe that the, the as as uh, Justice Sutantra Kumar mentioned that citizens are the third agency in this uh, whole uh, you know framework. We do believe, and we are you know uh, of firm belief that. Citizens have to play a very, very important and responsible role. And for that, children can be the, the biggest ambassador for it to bring that behavioral change, not only in our next generation, but also in our present generation. So for this, we have been working in the last one year and more than that. And we have touched around two lakh children. We have educated and we have kind of tried to bring them as, and make them part of this good year movement. And today we have... Uh, you know, got five uh, of the representatives of the children who are also going to take pledge to spread this awareness to many others to their in their schools, in their you know societies, and these children will also then pass on the message to the the next set of people. So uh, I would request uh, on you know Pooja Swamiji, Honorable Justice Tantra Kumar, and also the in at presence of all of you to you know, make these children and, and administer the oath of good air to them. We did it in Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium with 3,000 children last year. Now we can't have that kind of participation in this uh, COVID scenario. So on virtually, we have got five children at, who are very, very passionate champions of clean air, good environment, and good health. So I would request my team to show the slides of uh, clean air pledge which I think Honorable uh, Swamiji, you can uh, this, you know, read and then these children can follow with you. And post that, we will also be awarding uh, five of these children the Good Air Ambassador recognition and award as, as, as a recognition for them to work more on this line. Pooja Swamiji, these are the five point pledge which we want to uh, you know, kind of pass on and make these children take a oath and they will be follow forwarding this message to the public forward. So you can point wise, you can uh, you can point uh, pledge par sakte hai, jo children then can no, follow. Zero. And we all will do that. I think let us pledge all together and act yeah. for a youth right to clean air. Number yeah. one is plant more trees and protect them. We will plant more trees and we will protect them. Everyone to waste in your house. We will manage waste in our house. We will use public transport, e-vehicles, our cycle quite often. We will use we'll public, use public transport, e-vehicles, cycle. cycle quite often. We will use, we will save electricity and promote energy efficiency. We will save, save electricity. electricity and promote energy efficiency. We'll invite our friends to pledge be vocal and promote clean environment. We invite our friends to pledge, be vocal and promote, and promote clean environment. Dandavad Swami Ji, this pledge, which we have five points, we have to cover almost all the factors that we have to cover, which are the ones that we have to do contribute to pollution increase. So a uh, pledge, uh, I'm sure these kids will take this information, this message to many others uh, in their families, in their schools, and all that they co will come across in their life. Uh, now I would request uh, my team to, uh, and I'm, I'm requesting all of you, Dia Mirja, Shastrasvanta uh, Kumar, and Swami Kedanan Saraswati Ji, that this award or recognition for these children is being given from your hand in a manner virtually that and so that they come with, and go with full zeal and you know encouragement, excitement to work for the environment, for the clean air. So we will go one by one uh, on these awards. So the first awards we are going, we are giving to Nayonika Roy. She is from Veda Vyasa School uh, in Delhi, and she has been a very very vocal uh, advocate. See, we we can. Uh, call her the you know uh, greater tongue of our country. Very vocal girl who who has been uh, kind of mobilizing uh, the 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 and championing the cause of uh, green air. So Nayanka, are you there? 
Yes, sir. So, uh, Neonka, can you uh, say a couple of lines so that your video come on the screen? I think at least you can say that you sure. will try to do. Uh, you will work for making India breathe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Seriously, like this is such a big moment for me. Getting this, uh, seeing the certificate in front of my eyes, it's just so overwhelming, and it. I'm feeling so honored that I have been chosen to promote, to be vocal about it, to be an example for everyone that how people can unitedly work for good air, and it is just so overwhelming that. I'm I'm like lost to words. Like it is an amazing feeling. Thank you. Thank Thank you, Neonika. You will never be at the loss of word. You have you. We will have all those words to promote the agenda of clean air and to encourage people. Uh, can we have the second uh, recognition, please? So Suryans Govind. Uh, he is from Saint Columbus uh, School, Ashok Place. And uh, you know this award is being presented by Pooja Swami Chidanand Saraswati to you for promoting and encouraging all that you come across, everyone, family, school, to to talk about good, good air and that all those things people can do to protect the environment. Yeah. So that's one line, please, quickly. Sure. Thank you so much for giving me this award. I am very proud and overwhelmed by this uh, award and being a part of this meeting. And I surely pledge to make Earth greener. After all, we are the future, and we need to protect it. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. So much. You are the future, and you need to protect. We all need to protect it. Uh, the next recognition, please. Tanya Kaurav. She is from Bharti Public School, Mayur Vihar, Phase Three. Uh, this award is also presented to you from uh, Pooja Swami Ji for for. Championing the cause of good air to fight against environment. Tanya, would you like to say? Yes, sir. Yeah, please. Uh, I am very happy, and uh, I am, uh, and I. We will work together and make our earth pollution free and greener. And I will take pledge that uh, uh, we will plant more and more trees, and uh, I. And uh, we will make people aware about these to make to make the earth pollution free. And uh, I'm very happy. Thank you Thank so much. You, Tanya. you, you uh, will do all that possible. We, we trust and we, we have all hope on our coming generation that they will. What we could not do, they will do it. Uh, the next uh, recognition, please. Lakshita Tyagi from Uttam School for Girls. And Lakshita, would you like to say a word? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. I feel honored and I'm very proud that I've achieved this. And also, I this session was very beautiful and enlightening. I got to know a lot of new things. And uh, I will, I take this opportunity to pledge. I got this opportunity to pledge and I will keep up my pledge. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you much. Uh, Lakshita. Yes, next uh, recognition, please. Gungun from Gyan Mandir Public School in Delhi. Uh, Gungun, are you there? Yes. Good, good. yes. Gungun, would you like to say a word? Sure, sir. I'm really happy to receiving this award from you. Uh, and I think that, uh, that uh, uh, free from pollution, our earth. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. So these were the young ambassador for good air and Many more young ambassadors of Good Air are working for last one year, uh, with whom we were working closely. Uh, this were just to, you know, as a representative, we will be giving some more awards in the evening. We have a two-hour long program where children from across the country, from across Delhi and CR region, are going to perform and give a a, a more creative performing uh, message for 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 protecting good air and for you know working for clean environment uh, with this now i would we are also as of while these uh, young ambassadors will be working at their level uh, for all those people who have joined today just sutantra kumar dia mirza uh, pooj swami ji uh,
Dr. Randeep Guleria, Dr. Ajay Mathur, uh, Valentin Poltescu, all of you are also the biggest champions and then the ambassadors for good, uh, you know, uh, well-being for clean air, for good air, good food, health and well-being for the for not only the people, you know, uh, people in India, for but for the entire world. So we from our ISW Council uh, would like to make a, a small gesture by recognizing all of you with the ambassador of global well-being recognition. So I would request, uh, again, it is virtual. So I, I would request uh, Swami, uh, Parma, uh, Swami Chidananji to present this recognition to Justice Swatantra Kumar and then, uh, you know, Justice Sutantra Kumar to present this recognition to all other panelists, including Swami Chidananji. So uh, may I request my team to show the, the recognition certificates. So Justice Sutantra Kumar, your work is, is, you know, wonderful. There is no word to describe it, but it is just a very, very small gesture from our side to, to, to recognize your, your work, which, which is promoting uh, well-being, health, environment globally. With, Swami, this with this certificate, I have a beautiful green Tulsi plant also for him. He's done you. such a green, green service. Thank Wonderful. you very much. Please. Very kind of you. Thank you so much. Uh, you. The next uh, certificate, please. So this is for Dia Mirja. Dia Mirja, again, she is doing wonderful work with the kind of fan following influence on society, on youth. Uh, you are definitely the one of the most remarkable champion for environment, clean air, health and well-being. And we at ISW Council are humbled to uh, recognize you with this and consider this uh, recognition coming from Justice Sutantra Kumar and Swami Chidanan Saraswati Ji. Uh, had it been a, a physical event, that would have been given, uh, you know, personally handed over. Dia ji, would you like to say a word on? Thank you so much. This is a wonderful surprise and what a wonderful, wonderful uh, gesture. Thank you, IHW Council. And I hope that we can continue to work together to make the difference. I know we can. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dia ji, uh, for your kind word, for your participation. And we are committed to work together. The next uh, certificate, please. For Dr. Ajay Mathur, I think Dr. Mathur uh, would be there. So for the wonderful work with Terry as an institution and Dr. Mathur uh, as, a, as in his personal capacity is also doing. The next certificate, please. For Valentine Foltiscu, uh, this is again the recognition for him as, a, as a, in a personal capacity and also uh, for the UNEP for the wonderful work that they are doing in India and across the world. And we believe environment is closely linked with health and well-being and whatever is being done for environment, it is being done for the health and for the well-being of the human being and the entire planet as well. The next one. And this is for uh, uh, Pooj Swami Chidanan Saraswati Ji, the, the extremely extraordinary work which he is doing by bringing together faith across the you know, globe and also uh, all faiths to, to promote the uh, you know was uh, global was uh, efforts so thank you so much swamiji for all your kind uh, service to the humanity and uh, <clears throat> consider this is coming from all of us to you as a very very small gesture and appreciation from our side thank you thank you thank you so much so i think uh, maybe one for Dr. Randeep Guleria, Randeep Guleria, sir, Dr. Guleria will be joining us in the evening also to award uh, other, uh, uh, you know, children also. So we will be handing over to that time. Thank you so much, all of you who have joined us today. Uh, this is just one effort to make this message reach far and wide. And we believe this will continue going to as many people as possible. Thank you so much and dhanyawad for attending today's session. Thank you. For having us. Thank you so much.